Hello, and welcome to this special edition of Community Update. I'm Matthew Byard. Over 100 years ago in 1916, during World War I, the Canadian Armed Forces authorized Canada's first and only all-black military regiment, the No. 2 Construction Battalion. The battalion was formed in direct response to lobbying and organizing by black Canadians who were not allowed the right to serve in the Canadian military, or what was dubbed a white man's war. Rocky Coward was in Truro in the summer of 2022 when Prime Minister Justin Trudeau issued a formal apology to the former members of the battalion, their families, and their descendants for historical anti-black racism in the Canadian Armed Forces. I am here today to offer the Government of Canada's official apology for the appalling way these patriots were treated. Despite being optimistic about the forthcoming changes in the Canadian Armed Forces, and despite reaching a settlement in a class action lawsuit against the Canadian Armed Forces for racism he says he faced, Coward says anti-black racism in the forces still persists. Coward joins us today with Lionel Beals, who was recently fired from the Department of National Defense after being accused of offering a female co-worker money for sex, which he denies. Mr. Coward, Mr. Beals, uh, thank you for being here. Did I uh, get the bulk of that uh, correct? Uh, Lionel, what is your background? Uh, Rocky, what is your background and how did you two uh, come to, to meet? What is the nature of your guys' relationship? Well, thank you first and foremost, Matthew, for having us here this morning. Um, my name is Ruben Rocky Coward and I'm a retired senior non-commissioned officer in the Air Force. And essentially, I've been doing our community advocacy for the last 31 years. And I, I've been actually solicited by the Brotherhood to assist uh, Lionel Beals by virtue that the union, since 2020, has no representation until after a decision is made by the military, which in fact is unjust. Really so, quickly, what is the Brotherhood? Just for those the who Brotherhood are not of it. is an organization in Halifax that was established uh, quite a few years ago, I think in 2014, if my memory serves me correctly. And their job specifically is to assist black men who are going through trauma and struggles and, and this type of stuff, racism in the workplace. And they provide uh, psychological um, services, uh, mental health services, uh, medical services to injured individuals. And they put you two in touch, you're saying? Yes, they asked me if I would, if I would uh, entertain representing Lionel. And I gladly, uh, t looking, taking a brief uh, overview of what transpired, I, I agreed wholeheartedly. And, and Lionel, um, and, and so I understand you're also Lionel's, um, Mr. Beals is uh, a power of attorney, is that correct? That is correct, yes. And what is, uh, Mr. Beals, your um, history in the, with DND? Well, if I may, um, this, all of this that has transpired to Lionel has been so devastating and so egregious that Lionel has elected for me to speak for him today because it's just so overwhelming and it's, it's so blatantly racist and wrong. And mm -hmm. as we delve into this, uh, as we move forward today, I'm going to be able to demonstrate uh, by, by virtue of the documentation and by virtue of witnesses, colleagues that have given character references that uh, w essentially uh, Lionel was assassinated by um, racist senior military officers. Right. And so just to, to get to how we got here today, um, Lionel works for the, or pardon me, worked for the Department of National Defense, was once dubbed, uh, I guess you said, face of the base? He was, yes. In, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. No, no sorry. Um, in August, a uh, female co-worker uh, accused Lionel of offering her sex for money, uh, pardon me, money for sex rather. Uh, it later came out that she had sent him uh, some explicit images, but that was not part of the, the complaint. But you were determined to have been fired for offering her sex for money, is that correct? H how did we get there? Well, that is correct. In fact, um, on the 5th of May, uh, a lady that was having mental problems sent Lionel unsolicited uh, pictures of herself um, doing illicit things with herself. And she did it again in, if my memory serves me correctly, in August, early August. And it was determined on the 8th of August by the base, <coughs> they were alleging that Lionel had actually um, offered her sex for money. But the reality is, if we look at the document that was produced by the military, they say in cross-examining the lady in question that she, Lionel came in and found her crying. Mm. And when he asked what was wrong, she said, I'm behind in my rent. And he, and he said, well, I don't have anybody that can help you. Do you know anybody that can help me? He said, yeah, I have a friend. 
and maybe he, he'll, he's willing to assist you to move forward. And so with that, he said, I'm going to go to my vehicle, and you can come out and tell the guy what's going on. Um, now, so Lionel works as a, uh, a driver, is that a, correct? He's a driver for, for a D&D, and he works out of Shearwater. So they went to the vehicle to, to call the friend. Yes. And this was, and I don't want to get ahead of ourselves here, but this on the second occasion when, I guess, nude uh, images were sent to Lionel, this happened later that day? Um, quite frankly. A after, after the arrangements had been made um, for the friend to, to loan the money? That no, I think that was prior to. Well, there were two instances, two one, instances one in May, one in, one in, one in August, August. But the one in August was prior to all of this transpiring. Okay, so what happened then the, the day that, um, Lionel, you say she was crying at her desk, uh, was behind on her rent. You went uh, to the to the van to call a friend to offer help to loan her the money? And that's correct. And the friend indicated that on Saturday uh, he could conceivably come up with $200. But I, I think something that has to be sort of highlighted and underscored here is that in July of 2023, is it, we're talking about August of 2023, in May of 2023, mm -hmm. and July of 2023, Lionel was named the face of the base. Okay. And specifically what that is, for all of the good work that he's been doing over the course of 30 years, they recognize his professionalism, his, his candidness, his kindness, and his hard work ethic that he had. So he was identified as the face of the base over in Shearwater. Um, immediately after this young lady had raised this allegation, his uh, picture and face of the base were removed from both Facebook and on the base. Mm -hmm. And it's my determination predicated on what I've seen from the report from the lady. It's I believe that uh, white senior officers in the Canadian Armed Forces escalated something that was trivial, trivial and vexatious into a sexual uh, sort of a connotation so okay. that they could get rid of Lionel. And what is your theory as to why they would want to do that? Well, there's evidence from Lionel, well, three of Lionel's colleagues that from the time he started there back in uh, 30 years ago, he was daily referred to as a nigger. They said to him, uh, if the light's power went out, uh, shine your teeth and open your eyes. We can't see you. And oh, really? in, in particular, I'm going to name this lady. Her name is Brenda. And, and Brenda Pittman uh, spoke with Robert Clemens, who was a friend of Lionel, and, and often referred to Lionel as a nigger, referred to people from North Preston as niggers. To and his face? To, to his face, yes. Why not report that, or was it reported? It was reported, but nothing happened. In fact, Robert Clemens went to Brad Hutchings, who was their boss, and he said, what did that F and C say again? So as absolutely nothing transpired. So Lionel was fearful for most of his career because he was insulted almost daily, and he had to take it because he wanted to keep his job. So where does the, the face of the base come in? It seems like that might uh, conflict with each other. Why, well, why, why, why did they offer him the face of the base? They offered him the face of the base because there was a fear-minded uh, um, supervisor that Lionel had, Burnley, and Burnley said that, you know, I, I've seen the racism that Lionel has suffered and the attacks on him are unwarranted, uncalled for, and they demonstrate that racism is alive and well here in Shearwater. And he said, you know, a guy that was as pleasant and as kind as Lionel, he wanted to show Lionel that he appreciated him. All right. So I'm just going to go uh, to the, I wanted to call this the complaint. <clears throat> I'm going to read some of it verbatim. I'm going to try not to use the, um, the accuser's name. But it says, they disclosed their experience with Mr. Beals, which took place on August the 11th, 2023. After her uh, return from medical leave, uh, she mentioned that she had been on medical leave from May, from May to the 10th of August uh, due to mental health issues. And going down a little bit further, uh, they expressed financial difficulties to Mr. Beals and a $300 shortfall in paying rent. Mr. Beals stated he could probably help her and invited her to his work van. They proceeded to Mr. Beals' work vehicle. Uh, the, the accuser reports that on the way to the vehicle, Mr. Beals' demeanor was aggressive because he said to her, quote, uh, you don't do anything for me. I'm always being nice to you. The next line says uh, the accuser reports Mr. Beals made a call to his friend to borrow $200, as you indicated. Mr. Beals proposed that he could assist her financially, but stated to her, quote, nothing is free and requested sexual favors in return 
uh, for either her to have sex with him or to watch her have sex with herself. Um, she agreed to the financial assistance of $200, which Mr. Beals was committed to providing by an upcoming Saturday. But then she contacted you later that evening to say that um, it was taken care of and she didn't need to borrow the money anymore? That, that is correct. And she sent nude uh, images within that same, around that same time? Around that same time of herself. And, and to be clear, um, I accompanied Mr. Beals um, and a union worker on the 2nd of October. And we asked, um, at that point in time, the investigating officer, who was a francophone, and he had a tremendous amount of difficulty, not only in speaking English, but in understanding what I was, was suggesting back to him. Mm -hmm. I asked him, do you have concrete evidence that what she alleges took place? And he said, no, that this, these, are, these are allegations that she made. And then I said to him, are you aware that this young lady indicated to um, Lionel that, she, she, that her significant other thought she was at work. He came down, she came downstairs and found her having, found her significant other having sex with a woman on the sofa. And this was when? This was, um, I'm gonna say in before, I'm gonna say just before she went off in, in May. Okay. And so what was um, your relationship with this coworker? If I may, right. they met on two separate occasions. And it's only by virtue that Lionel is a driver, so he delivers, you know, uh, to her section periodically. Uh, they met for the time, for briefly when he was delivering something in in May, mm. and then again in August. And the most that had transpired in May was, "Hello, how are you doing?" Blah blah blah, and he went about his business. Mm. And in August, when he came in, he found her cry weeping, and Lionel expressed to the military when we went to that meeting on the second of October that he's calling with everybody and, 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 and that's, that bears itself out in the reference letters that we've received. And so we said, you know, what's the matter and why are you crying? So I guess if I may, I guess one of the obvious questions one might want to ask and why offer somebody who you don't know that well, uh, you know, $300. I mean, that is a nice gesture. Yes. I don't know that I myself would be, <laughs> be that kind of why. Well, so, what, uh, and we have to get to the kernel of it. Lionel didn't offer her the money. He said, I don't have any money. Right. I can't offer it. But he said, you know, given that he likes to see people happy and he goes and makes people happy. He said, so what I'm what I can do, I can ask a friend if he'll loan it to you. He didn't he didn't promise the loaner a nickel. Mm -hmm. So the fact that the report says that Lionel wanted to exchange money for sex is a mischaracterization of the reality of what transpired. Lionel indicated specifically that he has a friend that may have the money. He didn't say I could get it for you. And that bears itself out when she came to the truck. She heard the conversation. She heard the individual say that he could probably get it to her by, by Saturday. Um, Lionel walked her back into the building and went about his business. Didn't think done nothing more about that whole exchange. And you indicated, I guess, in, in one of the letters that um, in this report, there was actually a, a contradiction in terms of her, her claims. Is that correct? Yes. It, it, at the outset of the allegations that were leveled against Mr. Beals, uh, the base is saying that uh, there's misconduct is, is alleged and that Lionel expressed uh, that he would exchange uh, sex. I know he would exp he, he that he would exchange three hundred dollars for her to have sex with him and or she, for her to have sex with herself. But when we when I went into the document that the base produced the on cross examination of the lady in question, she indicated that but that's not the fact at all. The fact is Lionel offered to help me to pay the back rent that I owed. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's a contradiction in the allegations that are leveled and in the reality of what actually transpired. And I guess what was your, uh, Lionel, or Rock, if you want to speak for Lionel, your reaction to those initial uh, nude images that were sent via text message uh, in May. For me, that would be uh, you know a huge red flag, especially if they were unsolicited, if they came out of the blue. Um, you know, one might say that's definitely not somebody who you'd want to you know lend money to, um, where they seem maybe it's just so erratic to send nude messages like that. What what was your reaction, I guess, when those messages first came in? Well, Lionel said quite frankly he was he was shocked and appalled. Because she's a rather, she's a huge lady in particular. But not only that, that he didn't solicit them. Um, we showed, we showed the dates that they were sent by this lady, 
There was no response from Lionel whatsoever in any of the instances. So the alleg <coughs> the assertion that somehow that uh, he may have sort of gravitated towards these misconducts that she had pr provided Lionel with, he, there was no response whatsoever. And so what uh, interaction took place between those messages being sent and the day in which um, uh, Lionel found her crying at her death? None. There's, there's, she, the lady didn't produce a single letter from a text or whatnot that Lionel had engaged her, made any responses to those pictures. He said, I was just appalled by it. And I just thought, you know what? She has a history of mental illness, in fact. And, and just uh, for the record, she claimed that uh, Lionel, you requested these from her? No. That that's her claim? No. Why, why does she claim that she sent them? She didn't. She did. There was no explanation for why she sent them. And in fact, in the cross-examination, the military didn't ask her why she sent them. And we got no explanation whatsoever. And so what, I guess, would be your theory as to why she would you know, make up this lie about uh, offering sex for money? Actually, um, that's a good question, Matthew. And it has its origin in that Mr. Robert Clemens, who sent me a character reference letter for Lionel, he indicated that in 2018, there was a nettle gentleman that a lady um, had alleged that the individual had, was sexual misconduct. And Lionel's boss and another gentleman put pressure on her to say that he sexually assaulted her. And as a consequence of that, that individual with 39 years service, he was subsequently fired. And within the next month or two, he died of a heart attack. So there's an MO here on the military's part to frame people and, as, and then subsequently to get rid of them. But more but disturbing. Th this was a white man. Who this was a white man, right. a white Francophone man. Okay. And we and, and we've heard evidence that they they've called Lionel a nigger almost daily for 30 years. And Mr. Rob, Mr. Uh, Clemens said, uh, you know, if it was anybody else, it would have destroyed them by now. And Lionel indicate most nights he went home crying. That's how devastating the treatment was. But he said he needed to work. And so ultimately. It was determined that. Um I guess the military figured that the probability was that uh, she was telling, she was the one telling the truth. Lionel, you were dismissed. On one piece of paper, it says in December of 2023. Another piece of paper says in January, late January, just recently. What's that discrepancy about? What can you tell me about that? Well, I want to be clear about that. Thank you for raising that question, Matthew. There was not a shred of evidence to support their hypotheses in terms of the balance of probability. No money changed hands. There was there was um, no sex that ex that it was that was exchanged. But she's alleging, that, I guess, that it was proposition rather than it actually having taken place. But even the proposition, under the Nova Scotia Labor Code and under the Canadian Labor Code, Lionel has never had a previous uh, reprimand for anything of that sort. But right. there's a history. Three previous times, Lionel had allegations raised against him that were frivolous and vexatious, they were all dismissed. What was the nature of those allegations? Um, some, some lady, during the um, Swiss ear incident, someone said that him and a colleague had stole a, a galley sink. Another lady had alleged that he stole her garbage bags and they were good friends. Um, and another lady, another person um, had said that um, Lionel was unkind or something to her. But all of them were dismissed. They were all dismissed. All okay. dismissed. Under the, the Canadian Labor Code, if somebody does something untoward, they are first, they have, and spe especially if they have no previous history of that, and there's none, they have to first be giving a, a, a verbal warning. Secondly, they have to be giving a, a written warning. And thirdly, they're on counseling and probation. And for the latter two, they have to put somebody with that person to correct the shortcomings. That is the code. <coughs> you can't, after one allegation, fire somebody after 30 years. But it even gets more nefarious. I learned from a colleague that three other black males that work for base logistics are also being targeted as we speak for similar allegations. Right. All three others are, are, have, have been alleged to have conducted themselves in misconduct sexually. And in my view, this is 
atypical of black, anti-black racism, systemic racism, institutional discrimination, and cronyism. So you're legally uh, able to represent uh, Lionel, that's correct? As a community advocate, the only place I can't represent anybody in this country is in the Supreme Court of Canada and in the federal court. You have to be a lawyer. In any other instance, I am recognized under the law to represent individuals. And in fact, I've represented a, uh, an RCMP officer, Maurice Carberry, in a Canadian human rights complaint against the RCMP mm -hmm. um, for the last, actually, five years. Right. We went specifically to Ottawa last year before the Canadian Human Rights Commission, and I was able to achieve a significant settlement for Maurice Carberry. And so when they questioned Lionel about uh, these instances, you were present in that meeting as well, correct? I was only present for the, for, yes, I was present in the meeting for the 2nd of October, and that's where we, we went back and forth over the legitimacy or the correctness of the allegations that had been leveled, yes. And so to my understanding, it was, I believe, in and around January 9th, uh, Lionel was contacted via telephone to arrange a meeting, I guess, to give the findings of the report. There was some back and forth in terms of you not being able to attend. Uh, they were going to go through with the meeting anyway. It didn't end up happening until, I believe, uh, late January, January 20th, 22nd, at which point uh, Lionel was dismissed and given a letter that was backdated, or dated rather, I should say, um, in, into December, but you since uh, have got clarification on that with another letter indicating that the the date is actually January. What can you tell me about that whole back and forth that you had leading into this meeting? Well, what, what you understood the meeting was going to be about? Okay, I, 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 I thank you for asking that question. Essentially, at the outset of these allegations, Lionel, by virtue that he doesn't have a computer and he's not tech savvy, mm -hmm. they gave him registered letters underscoring what the allegation was against him. Um, I pr provided the military with a power of attorney, which they accepted, they acknowledged on the 2nd of October. Subsequently, <clears throat> Lionel was told by the commanding officer that, <clears throat> pardon me, he had two days to give an oral presentation or four days to give a written response. And I indicated that by virtue of the number of files that I had carriage of, that's unreasonable, I'll need a three weeks to, or to a month to do it, he, the base commander did acquiesce, he agreed to that. Um, and then subsequent to my submitting my a rebuttal, no response, um, no response whatsoever until, in fact, the, if my memory serves me correctly, until the 9th of July, the 9th of January, when Lionel called me and said he got a phone call from the base, from his boss, saying the next morning there's going to be a meeting on the findings from what the, the, the investigation was. Um, and I sent a letter to the base commander, no, to the base logistics officer. And, and what, I indicated- what, what is their name? Just yeah, the, uh, the base logistics officer is, is Commander Christopher um, McKenzie, no, I'm sorry, Christopher Gabriel. Right. And I explained to him that regrettably, on Sunday afternoon, my wife had got a letter that her sister had, uh, she, she uh, immediately, passed she passed, right. and we were making arrangements to fly to Toronto to assist the family. And so you wouldn't have been able to attend the the meeting on on January the tenth. That's correct. He offered you, I guess, to be able to attend virtually, or they could push it back. I believe it was till the eleventh or the twelfth. But if you couldn't commit to those dates, they were going to go through with uh, the tenth with an option to send you a, a virtual link or something like that. Th they did, but I, I conveyed to him that this is. This is so insensitive on his part by virtue that I'm going there to support my wife. Mm -hmm. And I pose the question, I'm wondering if it was your wife's sister that had passed, would you still be, would you still be adamant that we would conduct the meeting or would you preclude the meeting until such time as you would assisted your family and then come back afterwards? I never got a response. And I can't speak for him. I guess maybe what I'm or thinking is maybe he thought, well, the purpose of this meeting is simply to, you know, give him the decision. There's not going to be a lot of back and forth. Was that, in hindsight, what you assume his position was? Or not at all. My my concern was, why were they so diligent at the outset to ensure that they got a registered letter to tell him what the allegations were, but when they had their findings, no document, just a phone call. So what's your theory behind that? That my my theory is is that. There was no respect for Lionel by virtue that he's black. And I've seen this before. 
I've over the course of the last 31 years, I've represented over 300 people. And this is a common, common, common trait that white people do in the military when they're dealing with racially visible black or indigenous people. There's absolutely no respect. Why? Because most times we're dealing with white supremacists or white racists. <laughs> I am here today to offer the government of Canada's official apology for the appalling way these patriots were treated. For the overt racism of turning black volunteers away when they offered to sacrifice their lives for all, we are sorry. For not letting black service members fight alongside their white compatriots, for denying members of number two construction battalion the care and support they deserved, we are sorry. For failing to honor and commemorate the contributions of the members of Number 2 Construction Battalion and their descendants for the blatant anti-black hate and systemic racism that denied these men dignity in life and in death. We are sorry. We spoke, you and I, you know, ahead of the apology last year, and we spoke about uh, your class action lawsuit, the upcoming apology um, that was forthcoming by uh, Prime Minister Trudeau and some of the changes, I guess, that were going to be implemented in the Canadian military. Uh, you said you were optimistic uh, at that point. From what I can recall, is that still accurate, or it, do you have a, a different point of view now based off this specific instance, instance well, with Mr. Beale? Well, no, actually, you're correct. I was tremendously optimistic in light of the fact that the Prime Minister came to Truro and gave an apology. Uh, Anita Anon gave an apology as the Minister of National Defense. We had Mr. Doug Rook up there, and I, I listened to him carefully. He said, now that we have an apology, we're going to watch and wait to see if it's meritorious. In other words, we hear the apology, but we're going to see going forward what the actions are. So are you still in a wait-and-see stance? or Hell are you... no. Okay. Regrettably, since 2020 to 2024, 24, I've represented five black people at base Halifax or Shearwater, that were targeted for anti-black racism. And with the exception of Lionel, I have to say that the commanding officers and people that I dealt with were, were very reasonable. Uh, they were cooperative. And in one instance, um, we got an apology from a commanding officer and the lady, she was a civilian. I worked with civilians and military. So seeing that <clears throat> how pervasive this was and how decimated and devastated, it left the individuals that I represented. My optimism went out the window. It went out the window because I see that the leadership is lacking. And even in Lionel's case here, Vice Admiral Topshi, without any consideration for having a meeting with Lionel, without any previous um, documented events on his file, after 30 years, based on somebody's allegation. This is a white woman speaking against a black man. He's fired and humiliated. And we have all of these other people saying that Lionel took this foolishness on a daily basis and they knew and they did nothing about it. So you see, if the top, if the head of the fish is rotten, so is the rest. If we get a vice admiral that can say without any compunction without giving a man a chance to speak and, and have a meeting with him and just dismiss him, I would say nothing well, the, well, there was a meeting. Was There was a meeting at one point where, I guess, Lionel was interviewed, correct? Well, no, but Lionel was interviewed, but Lionel indicated, and I, and I sent the military, no, I sent the union corresponding evidence, Lionel has a hearing de deficiency. He can't hear well. Yeah. And... And he, he doesn't have the highest education. So in my, in my view, without representation, Lionel was fearful and the, and the fear that he faced or that he had was well-founded. In terms of the meeting that was scheduled for January the 10th that you weren't going to be able to attend? The no. That was later the, the, rescheduled? The, the, no. Lionel was fearful from the outset when they alleged that he'd done these things. All right. Because he said, I, I don't even know what you're talking about. I didn't do nothing to this woman. It came as a complete and, shock. Yeah. Yes. And as you can see, we have evidence from 
a young lady that said she worked with Lionel for two years. She had no problem asking Lionel for a ride to Halifax, which she drove her over there. Mm -hmm. So my question is, if Lionel had these proclivities, why did it take 30 years for them to manifest themselves? Right. And more importantly, why would somebody identify Lionel as face of the base if he was a rogue and difficult and this was the kind of person that he really was? Right. I reject that notion. And uh, you mentioned the, the uh, the accuser has some uh, mental health uh, difficulties or was dealing with some, which I believe she indicated in terms of why she was, um, I guess, off for a period of time from May, from May to August. <clears throat> that, I guess there's two ways that, that could be looked at. One would be that that discredits maybe some of her claims. She's claiming that that was, I guess, Lionel's incentive to want to, I guess, uh, prey on her. Where, where do, what do we take from that? I reject the notion that uh, that that gives rise to any ill actions by Lionel by virtue that Lionel shared with both both myself and the investigating officer that um, she was absent without authority from the base and her supervisor, a sergeant, uh, Mike, had to go all the way out to Peggy's Cove because she was she sent she sent or he got word that she was wanted to commit suicide. And this is a complete separate instance from complete the separate right. instance. She's had four or five cars that she's written off in the last couple of years. So this lady is seriously troubled. And you th and you think that this is relevant to, you know, assessing these claims? Some might say that, you know, we, we can't go there. That's something, you know, you're, you're using a personal situation that has nothing to do with it to try to, you know, discredit her. You, you're saying it's it's actually relevant to this. Though. Well, I say it's relevant in this context. We we see a history previously where a Leanne lady was pressured by Lionel's boss and another individual to raise the stakes of the allegation from sexual assault, I mean, from a sexual misconduct, so that, in fact, it was alleged that the man sexually assaulted her sexually. And so, and as a consequence, this individual was fired. And it seems to me that um, somebody of this lady's nature that has mental problems She'll do what they want her to do because she wants to keep her job. She's already conveyed to Lionel that she's having trouble paying her rent. So the obvious impetus here, incentive, would be that she needs money. Because, I mean, I guess if we look at racism, there can be that one, I guess, view that, um, oh, well, that's a black guy. Let's not include him in our activities or, you know, okay. racism like that. But you're painting a picture where they're saying, you know, this is racial hatred where we're going to target someone. So am I getting what, that right from what you're saying? Yeah, and let me qualify this. His boss, the, the, the Brenda Pittman, um, that referred to him as a nigger, to his face, behind his back, told people not to trust him. She said that the people from East Preston are niggers. That's one part. That's a big alleg allegation you're making right here. No, 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 no. I'm not making it. I got it from Robert Clemens. He gave me that as a a, a part of his response, he witnessed it himself. So you're confident saying that, well, saying the woman's name in the room. Well, well you just, you just yes, so. no, I'm confident saying saying her name because it was given to me. If I'm okay. telling a lie, I was told a lie. Okay. So I'm not fabricating this. Right. And so, from my perspective, um, the lady in question, there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason to go from somebody that's trying to help you to suggest now that he went down the road and offered you money for sex it doesn't make sense when in fact she went to the vehicle with him and the call was made to a, a, an individual I can give his name I have an email I have a, a written response from him that he spoke with with Lionel in the presence of the lady and at no time was there any mention of any exchange for sex or money it was that on on Saturday he would provide her with the money, provided she promised to pay the man back. And obviously you can't speak for him and he's not here, but why would he want to offer a, a stranger money? Somebody, you know, a, a friend of a friend who, who he's never met. You, you would know. have to ask him that okay. question, quite frankly. I, I, I'm I not willing to even go there because I'm not in his mind. Okay. Now you mentioned um, former uh, Minister of National Defense, uh, Anita Anand. Yes. It was just prior to this uh, interview that I realized, unless I forgot, that uh, Bill Blair is actually now the the current Minister of uh, National Defense. Where, if any, does this uh, fall into his lap? I don't have any faith in Mr. Bill Blair whatsoever. And let me be unequivocally clear. 
when I was dealing with Maurice Curvy in the who has complex post traumatic stress disorder from what he experienced from senior officers in the Canadian, I mean, in the RCMP, I wrote, I gave a letter in fact <coughs> at that time to Jeff Reagan, who was the member of parliament. He was the speaker of the house. He said, I, I will, Ruben, I'll deliver this letter personally to Bill Blair. Mm -hmm. To this date, he's never responded. And so where does, uh, not without going off too far on a tangent, where does that case sit now? Well, um, as, as I indicated, I, I, I represented uh, uh, Maurice Carvery on the 1st of May, 2022, and again on the 18th of July, 2022, and we emerged out of there with a significant settlement, and an, um, he was satisfied with that settlement. So I guess when, where would uh, Bill Blair then have to uh, intervene if it's been, been but, settled? Uh, that, was two, three ye that, was two, that was three years since okay. I sent him that letter. Okay. And I had a promise from uh, Mr. But he, Jeff but, Reagan. But he's, but he's only recently became the defense minister, unless I'm mistaken. You're correct. But at that time, he his portfolio was minister of public policy, I believe. Okay. So that was in his wheelhouse. And okay. that's why Mr. Reagan, Mr. Jeff Reagan, said to me, Ruben, I will hand deliver it. So now in his current position, you don't have confidence no. based on your experience with him or lack of experience with him in his prior position. I have uh, none whatsoever. Okay. And so also, without going off too far on a tangent, you're, you and three other plaintiffs are involved in a class action lawsuit against the Canadian Armed Forces. <clears throat> when we spoke before, you said uh, an agreement in principle had been reached. I guess you're now closer to that actually being uh, settled. Is that correct? Number one, is, is that correct? Number two, does that um, <clears throat> conflict well, with this, is that, does um, it set that back? And are these in any way connected or? Well, and I want to be clear, that's a good question you pose because notwithstanding, we've been dealing, I've, I've been working with uh, Stuart McKelvey over the last uh, uh, eight years in tandem with the Department of Justice for their, for their client who's the uh, Canadian Armed Forces. Mm -hmm. um, I've dealt with several black and racially visible people in the military at several bases across this country that wrote me complaining of systemic racism. And um, essentially, what I was telling them to do was hold tight until we get the um, settlement agreement in principle in place. But um, at the end of the day, in my humble opinion, the only way is that we can eradicate racism in the workplace, um, we have to have leaders that are committed to diversity, equity and inclusion. And we have to have a statement from the military when people join that you were warned that if you use any racist tactics, you will be dismissed from the military. There has to be something that is equal to the racism that people of color are facing. And if they know beyond any shadow of a doubt that if you're racist towards somebody, your job is gone, that will be a disincentive for them to be discriminatory. Failing anything shy of that, I'm not really optimistic because I'm. But does this, does your advocacy for Mr. Beale, does this jeopardize that or is that completely it, separate? It, 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 you know. You, your, your lawsuit, I mean. Yeah, that, no, it, it shouldn't in any way because you know what? Anytime somebody is egregiously wrong, it's my duty as a human being to make that wrong right. And and the and the millet, I mean, and the I mean, uh, Stuart McKelvey know that I've been an advocate long before I started with those individuals. Long before. So you haven't gotten any pushback? Um, Not at all. Okay. No, no. So uh, Lionel Beals has been uh, dismissed. Is that is it one and done? Is that case closed now, or is there a, a lawsuit? Is, could this be appealed? Has it been appealed? Where are we going with this? Well, now? quite frankly, I'm working in tandem with the union and who have uh, apprised me that they put everything else on the back burner, Lionel's case is front and forward, and concurrently, I, it's my intention within the next week or two to file a complaint with the Canadian Human Rights Commission, notwithstanding, they don't have a, a, a good track record with black people, but I'm gonna file a complaint with the Canadian Human Rights, identifying that Ra Lionel has been discriminated um, pursuant to Section 7 of the Act, and um, I'm gonna pursue it tenaciously. Right. Now, on a somewhat separate note, um, I believe you, were, you also testified in the Lionel uh, Desmond inquiry, is that correct? 
That's correct, yes. And just the other day, they um, released their final report uh, into that inquiry. Any thoughts to share on that? Well, what was surprising to me, I, I perused the report by, by the judge, and I looked at 25 recommendations. I looked at the witness list. I had personally solicited the Honorable um, Warren Zimmer for standing to give oral presentations and to file a legal brief. He agreed to that. I submitted my oral presentation as I was requested to do. I spoke for an hour and a half. I sub subsequently submitted a legal brief and much to my chagrin, my name wasn't even on the list. What list? On the, on the witness list that was, in, that was in the final report, my name was, wasn't, wasn't even, wasn't present. And so why, why would my name be omitted from that, from that list? I, I, I'd be why, why, why do you think it was omitted? Quite, quite frankly, my, my, my experience with, with white people in the media is that whenever I speak, it's not captured. In fact, yesterday, subsequent to, that, to, the, to the report reading, I spoke <coughs> with the media. The only one that carried that was CBC, and there was at least 16 different medias there. So you, someone could say, well, you know what? You're, mm, you're off center. What am I? But with respect to the, the report itself, did they do right by uh, Lionel Desmond, do you feel? Or? Regrettably, they did not because, and I want to say specifically why. On the 19th of December, 2019, Veterans Affairs Canada made a proclamation and they acknowledged <laughs> that for first line responders, for RCMP, and for military members who have been diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder, and this is what's significant and very important. It affects the member, the family, and the community. So my question was to the Canadian government, while you purport that the VAC has identified this, so in the 25 questions you pose, where is the assistance now for the family? Where is the assistance for the community? Because if you recall, back in 1991 in Sydney when they had the McDonald murders, within a few weeks they tore the building down. You know why? So the people could begin to heal. We had the portal pick uh, uh, tragedy. Right. In short order, they tore the place down, if my memory serves me correctly, in, in, in um, Dartmouth. And they did everything they possibly could to assist the people. And when I look at it in terms of um, what is the only disparity here, they were white. And, and the um, Bordens and the Desmonds are black. What support? In fact, it was disturbing to see that um, none of the reporters asked Sheldon Borden, who is the brother-in-law of Lionel Desmond, asked um, Cassandra Desmond, who was the brother of Lionel Desmond, Your or sister. me, how were, you fa how were your families coping and how were you doing? One reporter said to me, well, would you agree that the 25 um, recommendations will help other people? And I wanted to say to him, you don't have no idea how racist that is, do you? Why? Why so? Because you, you heard me speak about the family languishing in a home where the tragedy and the murders took place seven years after the fact. And you, you wouldn't pose a question as, well, how should we rectify that? You want me to suggest that somehow I'm acquiescing that those 25 recommendations are going to help other people. But right now, because Lionel Desmond was a Canadian Armed Forces member, where is the military? Where is the Canadian government coming in now to recognize, because they echoed it on the 19th of December 2019, that affects the family and the community. Mm -hmm. So where is the assistance for the family and the community. It's not, so I said to him, I'm gonna answer this succinctly. Ris ipsa loquitur. It's a Latin term, it's a legal term. Yeah, and it I, means I the facts means. speak for themselves. Okay. And I said, thank you, no more questions. Right. Because I just thought that it was ignorant for him to suggest, well, would you agree? I'm here talking about a family that has been decimated and devastated by the loss of their loved ones. And he's asking me if these 25 things will help other people. Right now, I'm not worried about other people. I'm worried about the Desmonds and the Borden family. How Let's are, look after them first. How are they doing? They're in, doing in horribly. Estimation. They're doing horribly because you know why? Nobody can heal 
And I'm, talk, I'm going to first talk about the, the Bordens. Nobody can heal in the environment where the harm took place. Right, the, the, the murder-suicide. Exactly. But for, if we're being specific. Yes, and yeah. specifically, quite clearly, for the, for the Desmonds, they're still in the, they still haven't healed yet because there's, there's no closure because, as the judge said, we don't want to <laughs> point fingers. Well, somebody dropped the ball because four people are dead. Yeah. So, and, and I want to be clear, I know this is a, a, a fatality inquiry, so we weren't looking to find fault but in order to correct anything, they were ready to pump money into all of these institutions that were deficient or lack thereof. But you have to say that, you know what? All of these institutions should have done better. But in doing that, then he opens the door for a lawsuit. Any, um, any final thoughts? What, where are we going you know, with all of this? Uh, it's, it's Black History Month. Uh, you know, we're doing a lot of celebrating of our culture and our, our history. But where are we at present? Where are we going with this uh, final at, thought? At present, I want to thank you in particular, Matthew, for giving us this opportunity because this is Black History Month. It's 2024, and here I'm faced with defending an innocent man because of anti-black racism, systemic racism, institutional discrimination, and cronyism. And that bears itself out by virtue of the compelling uh, letters of reference by several of his colleagues that reject in totality the image that Vice Admiral um, Topshi and Commander um, Gabriel try to paint a picture of, of uh, Lionel. Again, how can you dismiss somebody with 30 years of service on an allegation from a mentally disturbed European white woman and no not a shred of evidence to support, and let's say hypothetically, if in fact, let's say that transpired. Um, Lionel told me there was a white man over in Shearwater that had sex with a woman. They moved her to another place and kept him there. Yeah. So, so you know, this is, this is typical of what racism looks like. We are the targets. And in 2024, I see no variation. Quite frankly, I am disappointed. And I'm disappointed from the prime minister on down because no, and I'm, I'm gonna look at Lionel's case, for example, and I'm gonna look at the Desmond's and the Borden's case, for example. They can't say that they didn't know that a family was languishing in a house for seven years. And nobody with a heart would, after 30 years, just fire somebody. We go in to get a letter, he reads the letter, hand your card in, and we're gonna escort you off the base like he's a criminal. And he didn't do nothing, he didn't put a hand, this woman didn't say he touched her, he didn't do anything sexually to her, but on her word, this is the Mississippi of the North. Hmm. If somebody can, if a white person can say something against me, and they chalk it up and, and make up a case out of nothing, and I have white colleagues who are refuting it, but it has no merit, I gotta call. I gotta call. I gotta. I can't call a chicken a duck, because I grew up on a firm. That's a. That's a chicken. Right. So it's racism. And I hope I'm gonna fight for Lionel as as tenaciously and as hard as I can, in tandem with the union. And I want to bring this to the public, and I want to bring it to fear-minded Canadians that know racism is alive and well, and that's what's regrettable. And I've been fighting this my whole life. I got out of the military 29 years ago because of racism. Yeah. We've been talking to Reuben Rocky Coward, a senior non-commissioned officer in the Canadian Air Forces, and Lionel Beals, who was recently dismissed from the Department of National Defense after allegations of sexual misconduct. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel. We'll be following up on the story. Thank you again, gentlemen, for joining us. Community Update is brought to you with the support of the following organizations, businesses, and individuals. Heritage Canada, Canadian Association of Community Television Users and Stations, Cactus, Baileo, M4 Media, Flenjor Foods, Shei Ajetamobi, and Shokoto.